Whenever I put a base design on my channel, I encourage you to adapt it to your needs. In this video, I show you that I follow this advice myself. Here, we see the original Frustrator V2 in its state after about one and a half weeks. Let me take you on a tour. First of all, you see that in the end, we decided to upgrade the whole outer walls to sheet metal. The doors are armored doors. The space behind the entrance is full of items, including a locker and a wall. The walls of the core are armored, and of course this happened bit by bit over time as we got richer and richer. So just because a base on my channel uses a certain material, it does not mean that you cannot upgrade it further. This is the core. The Christmas lights and the rocks make it more friendly and alive. We managed to find enough auto turrets to put one on top of each of the shoots. This was a reaction to an online raid where raiders had broken into the main corridor and we had to drive them out in risky counterattacks. The idea was that if raiders ever managed to break into the corridor again, those turrets would give us extra firepower to clear out the corridor and reclaim it. These garage doors are separating the different sections of the base. They helped us tremendously to protect ourselves from rocket and grenade launcher fire after the core had been breached. During said raid, the raiders had rocketed out all those outer walls which are part of the starter unit. Basically, the raiders put a big hole in the base, destroyed the garage door and then entered the core where we managed to kill them, including the rocketeer who kindly left us two rows of rockets. As you can see, we also upgraded the chutes that lead to the main loot rooms to armored. This means that any brute force raid from the outside will cost 27 rockets. Here is one difference in the design to the video. I used doors, initially garage doors and later armored doors to protect the main loot rooms. My thinking was that closing a window loot room is inconvenient, so it would stay open most of the time. A garage door is closed within seconds. Also, I used a modified loot room design here, which is a good compromise of storage, mobility and shotgun trap spots. Sounds like my teammates are coming back. Let's go and meet them upstairs. Upstairs, we now have a minicopter garage. On top of the roof, we have two windmills, giving us all the electricity required. Here is an external auto turret compartment, as introduced with the aggravator. One of the great things is that you can operate them from inside with switches next to the tier 3 workbench. My teammate just flipped the switch and now all the turrets are in action. There are three auto turrets attached to the base, covering all angles around the base. One thing you never see in my videos is the use of high external walls to create a compound. Behind the walls, we put a ring of barricades to avoid cheap ladder raiding. These are our emergency drop boxes. For example, when coming back from a raid, there was oftentimes not enough space in the actual drop boxes, so we left our loot here and sorted it later. The rest of the courtyard is used for furnaces, horse troughs, an oil refinery, and so on. Here we have a special entrance with windows that can help to counter raiders. All these little buildings out there are not just external TCs, but they also contain auto turrets. A second switch next to the tier 3 workbench opens them up all at once. This way they can be a nasty surprise to unsuspecting raiders. You see that there are more bases around the Frustrator. They turned out to work super well as flanking bases when we got raided.
As you can see, those outside turrets extend all around the base. This is one of the things you usually don't see in build videos, because I believe that you would add them if the situation calls and allows for it. In case you wonder how we organize our loot, let's check the boxes. We have food at the entrance. Those boxes serve as drop boxes. Here I kept some bolties in case we suddenly need sniper support. These boxes are normally drop boxes. Currently they still hold loot from our last raid. One thing you might have noticed is that the doors use different skins. This is by design. We pick the skins by their dominant color. This is the red chute leading to the red main loot room. Even the boxes are red. During this wipe, the red loot room was reserved for guns and gear sets. The blue loot room is the one where we kept materials and components, basically everything we need for crafting. That made sense because of the proximity to the tier 3 workbench. By the way, these are the switches for the auto turrets. The pink loot room is where we hit the TC. It was meant to store everything else, such as tools, sulfur and raiding equipment, but we also had to use it for guns. It looks like we're prepared for another raid. We also have more grenade launchers and turrets than we can ever practically use. There's also a hidden loot room that you won't find in the design from the video. I used the soon to be patched pixel gap exploit to hide two boxes underneath the floor tile. They can be used to store the most valuable items overnight, but it seems they don't hold much at the moment. The boxes in this area currently serve as overflow and contain a lot of random things. In particular, it appears we have too many guns. You might also have noticed that I integrated lockers into the honeycomb. We had a lot more of them, but lost some of them during raids. The team also treats those lockers well, which means they are usually stocked up with ready-to-go kits, which includes a gear set, a gun, ammo, food and meds. Here someone broke that discipline. Instead of food and more meds, we have two guns. Our low grade is currently over here. I would rather have kept it in one of the main loot rooms. Here we kept meds in case people need to restock their kits quickly. Down here we have beds for the most active team members. As you can see, the build looks a lot more alive than in the design from my build videos. I hope this video encourages you to think about adapting my bases to your needs.
Take care, Evil Wurst, out. <lacht>